Thank you, Valerie. Very much appreciate your nice words. I want everyone to know that you were a very good special envoy that did everything you could in order to narrow the gaps between Israel and the Palestinians and to try to enable us to move forward in order to strengthen our economic ties. Valerie, you were behind the idea to uh, give an industrial zone to the Palestinian in Bethlehem, and I was very happy to give you an end in order to implement th that project that is giving uh, many, many jobs uh, to the Palestinians and helping them a lot, and all of that sponsored by the French government. Of course, it couldn't be done without His Excellency that we are very happy to have here today the President of the French Republic, Monsieur Nicolas Sarkozy, that is here with us this evening. <laughs> Mr. Sarkozy is a very good friend of the State of Israel. I had the opportunity to meet with him many times. The last time was two or three months ago in Paris at his office, and he showed his commitment to the existence, to the safety and security of the people of the State of Israel, and he always did everything he could in order to make sure that in any kind of solution, no matter if it's with the Palestinians, with the Arab world, with the Iranians, top on the list will be the safety and the security of the people of Israel, and for that I would like to thank you very, very much. <laughs> Prime Minister Barak and Ms. Nili Barak, the other president that we have here today of the institution, Professor Reichmann, and Mrs. Nira Reichmann, member of the French Parliament, Mr. Meir Khaviv, my close friend that arrived here uh, today, and I would like to welcome you uh, as well. I don't know if I was asked to uh, give my speech in English or in Hebrew, so it's up to you to decide if you would like it English. Okay, I'll stick to English. During the last few weeks, we are facing a new phenomenon of boycotting Israel. From FIFA to Orange, from the National Student Association of Britain to other organizations, all of them are having one main goal to fight Israel. And to fight Israel is mean to bring the destruction of Israel. If they cannot do it militarily, they would like to do it economically. I got a phone call last Friday from Stephen Richard, the Director General of Orange. They told me that he is very sorry about what's happened after his speech in Cairo, and he would like to apologize personally and officially. And they are totally against any kind of boycott. I told him that the people of Israel is very, very upset about his words and about his words in Egypt that finally helping a lot to those who are trying to bring the destruction of the State of Israel. And we would like to do everything we can in order to bring Orange to fight back and not to give up. Because if Orange will do it, it will give an excuse to many others to follow them by saying that it's only a matter of commercial interest that they are having and not the real excuse that they wouldn't like to be in Israel because there is a huge pressure imposed on them. We, Monsieur Sarkozy, Monsieur le Président, we know that if you have been the president, you have made a very, very clear statement 
as one of the owners of Orange that is owned by the French government, 25%, by saying that you are totally against it. I know it because I know you very well. I was very happy to find out that the current government of France said the same, said that they are totally against any kind of boycotting the State of Israel. But what we would like to do is to make sure that finally we will prevail. In Israel we are very united about that issue. We are having many disputes in many other issues, peace, security, economy, but we are very united about fighting back the boycott. And I'm sure that if we will keep our unity, finally we will prevail. And that's what needs to be done. In these days, unfortunately, the fact that Orange was trying to boycott Israel is not the only move that is taken by foreign organizations. But unfortunately, we can realize that even here in our region, our neighbors, the Palestinians, are trying to do the same. They approached FIFA only recently, 10 days ago, by asking to expel Israel out of the organization. They approached the ICC, the International Criminal Court in The Hague. They are trying to approach the Security Council. All of those moves are violating totally the Oslo Accords. The Oslo Accords that are saying that no one, that both sides, cannot take unilateral moves. Those agreements that were sponsored by the American President, Bill Clinton, and were signed in the White House, are not giving a good signal. Because I cannot find more Israeli Prime Minister in the future that will be able to sign, to sign such kind of an agreement, even if it will be sponsored by the United States, if they are letting the Palestinians to violate those agreements. We believe that the only way to achieve a solution is through peace. And peace can be achieved only through negotiations. I call here upon here today to the Palestinians to resume the negotiations without preconditions and the sooner the better. I think that the time has come for them to realize that every negotiations finally bring compromises from both sides. We cannot reach an agreement without compromises. They feel now that they can achieve their goals by approaching the ICC or the Security Council or by letting the French to approach the Security Council. And for that they don't have to pay any price. They can achieve their goals without negotiating with Israel, without making any concessions. That's something that will not lead them to the main goal that they really would like to have. The only way to do it is through negotiations. And if they will resume the negotiations with the current government of Israel, I can tell you, as the Vice Premier, as the Chief Negotiator now with the Palestinians and behalf of the Prime Minister, if they are willing to do so and to resume the negotiations, they will find Israel as a real and serious partner toward peace. And they have to make their choice. <clears throat> they have to make their choice. And their choice is very clear. No one can impose a solution. No one can enforce us to take a solution we cannot live with. That's an interest of Israel and the entire region. I think we have to share our efforts with our neighbors, with all the moderate countries in the region. And we have to go back to the same old formula that is saying very clear that we have to embrace the moderates, but in the same time we have to isolate the extremists. 
That's what needs to be done in order to bring peace and stability to our region, and by that, to bring peace and stability to the entire world. I call those moderate countries to form a regional conference that will be based on negotiations, on peace, on security, and economy. Economy, as I've just mentioned, what we did with Valerie when she was your special envoy to build the industrial zone in Bethlehem. We did many other projects within the Palestinian areas, and we are willing to do much more. It needs us these days to rebuild Gaza, and we would like to do it, but we cannot tolerate the idea that while we are doing everything we can in order to help them to rebuild Gaza, they continue or resuming now to launch rockets and missiles toward Israel. It's only a few of them, but that's how it starts. Four here and six there, and then it comes like a rain. We would like to stop it while it starts. And it doesn't matter if there are those who are launching it are unauthorized cells, like they call it. There might be unauthorized cells, but the responsibility is in the hands of the Hamas. And the Hamas is responsible to all of those rockets that are fired toward Israel. So while we are doing it, 800 trucks are moving on a daily basis from the Israeli side to Gaza in order to give them everything they need. They are blocked now from the Egyptian border. The only border that is open is the Israeli one. 800 of trucks full of goods that gives them everything they need. We can give them even much more. We could give them much more in the past, but they didn't want to take because they wanted to keep the smuggling industry through those tunnels that they dig. What they are trying to do these days as well. About security, we and the moderate countries are facing a real threat. Israel is in a very complicated situation, Monsieur le Président. In our northern border, we are having the Hezbollah. We are having the Al-Qaeda and Jabhat al-Nusra. In our eastern border, we are having Daesh, ISIS. In our southern border, we are having the Hamas and the Islamic Jihad. In our, Boston, in our western border, we are very lucky to have the Mediterranean Sea. Otherwise, we could have one more enemy there that is trying to distract the state of Israel. But it's not only us. It's all the moderate Arab countries and the Gulf states that are very much afraid of the Iranian threat. And the Iranian threat is a real one. The Iranians are trying to buy time. We know, and you know, and all the world, all the intelligences knows, that the Iranians are trying to achieve a nuclear power. And we have to stop them, and the sooner, the better. We have to do it because we need to bring more stability to our region. The Iranians are trying to destabilize the whole region. They are trying to do it in the Gulf states. They are trying to do it in Syria, in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Bahrain, in many, many other countries. But in order to stop the Iranians, we need the whole world together, united, in order to achieve that goal. Unfortunately, there are some countries that don't like the idea to impose tougher sanctions on Iran. And the fact that they are not willing to do it is not helping us. They don't like to do it because they are very much afraid the tougher sanctions on Iran will bring the Iranian regime down, and then the Syrian regime will fall, and then the Hezbollah will fall in Lebanon. And it means that the whole Middle East, first and foremost, the whole oil reserves of the entire world for the next 150 years will fall to the hands of the United States and the West. And that's the reason they don't really like to go 
forward in order to impose more sanctions. Even we disagree with the United States about that issue. We are having good relations with the United States. They are very big supporters. We are having a bipartisan support toward Israel, and it doesn't matter who is leading the country. I can tell you from first hand that President Obama is making everything he can in order to keep the safety and the security of Israel in the most, let's say, measures that he can take in order to make sure that all of us can live, us, can live here in peace and quiet. We would like Europe to do the same. We would like Europe to understand and to realize that we are in a very, very complicated situation. I was asked many times by Europeans why we, are not a playing, why we are not playing a key role in the peace process. And I told them more than once, if you would like to play a key role, you should have more balanced attitude toward the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, not to get or to accept all of their demands of 67 borders, that the capital is, is Jerusalem and maybe the right of return. In order to become a fair mediator, you have to become a, a more balanced toward the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But more than that, you have to know that every solution should be based on the idea of keeping the safety and the security of, of Israel. I know, Mr. President, that you are one of the most important European leaders that putting the interest, the most important interest of Israel in the front line. And for that, I would like to thank you very, very much. Thank you.